The cabinet includes members from each of the three major political parties which are seeking to shape France's future. Strongest of them is the MRP, the Popular Republican Party. Most moderate of the three, but still well to the left, it is led by such able men as Georges Bidot and Francis Gay. Next in strength are the communists, who control 30 of France's 40 industrial unions and are constantly working toward closer cooperation with Russia under the leadership of Jacques Duclos and Maurice Torres. Holding the balance of power is the Socialist Party. Though they often vote with the communists, the Socialists stand with the popular Republicans in seeking stronger ties to Britain and the United States. But primary concern of all parties is rehabilitation at home. And key to rehabilitation is coal, to supply power for industries and for transportation. Using his influence with the miners, many of whom are communists, Torres has helped to effect a speed up in coal production, which fell off seriously, to a great extent because of undernourishment among the miners. Today, coal production in France itself is nearly at pre-war levels, but this is not enough. For with reconstruction in progress, the need for fuel is far greater than it ever was. Even before the war, France always depended heavily upon coal imported from the rich mines of Germany's Ruhr district, across the frontier. And though Germany is now under Allied occupation, little coal from the Ruhr is being shipped to France. Deprived of this German fuel they so desperately need for reconstruction, the French are dismayed by indications that their allies may be using much of the Ruhr coal to maintain Germany's own heavy industries a move the French fear and oppose above all things. For these industries, whose capacity even now is so much greater than those of France, have always provided Germany with formidable power to wage its aggressive wars, and any extensive restoration of them would be a direct and dangerous threat to the future security of France. Further cause of uneasiness is that France has been assigned the smallest and industrially least important occupation zone in Germany. The kind of regime that will emerge in Germany after the Allied occupation is of grave concern to France. In administering their zone, the French have established firmness without vengefulness as their policy. And to this line, General Marie Pierre Koenig, the military governor, is scrupulously adhering. In all dealings with the conquered enemy, the French remain coolly correct. For toward a people which has brought destruction upon its neighbor three times in as many generations, the French have little sympathy. To German civilians, they make available, so far as they are able, whatever is strictly necessary for subsistence. But in rooting out and punishing active Nazis, the French have been more energetic than the other occupying nations. For of them all, France has suffered most from predatory German nationalism. And as far as it lies in her power to do so, France means to make sure this time that she will never again have to live in fear of attack from across the Rhine. Yet France knows only too well that her security in the new Europe will depend not on her relations with Germany alone, but upon the decisions being made by the foreign ministers of the United Nations. French diplomats, with a background of long experience in the game of European power politics, have noted with ever-deepening misgivings the growing disunity among the great nations which hold in their hands the peace of the world.